to another episode of Falcon with Tube with me, Joel. Um, on tonight's episode, what we're going to be doing is lamp training hawks. Um, we're going to be using my two male Harris hawks, John and Wick. Um, they're first year birds that I have done a full video of their training uh, on the channel as well. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing you how to sort of get your birds confident and capable of flying at night. I would highly recommend doing this um, because in England, over winter, well, when I get home at like four, half four, it's already pitch dark. Um, I don't like to fly my birds at weekends, I don't think it does them really any good. Um, and they will and are capable of flying extremely well and having great success at night. Um, it doesn't have to just be done with Harris Hawks, uh, I've done it with Goss Hawks and Eagles. If you followed me for a long time, um, you know, my old uh, Goss Hawk Dala, she used to fly very, very well in the dark. Um, and also, you know, if you've got no ferrets, it's a great, great time um, for when rabbits are out. Uh, you can always guarantee you'll see some rabbits around at night time. Um, so don't worry about it. If, if your bird of prey is confident and it's flying well, it sh there's no reason why it shouldn't fly in the dark. And I'm going to talk you through a few training tips and equipment that we use and I use um, to successfully lamp and night hawk your birds. Thank you. Guys, um, this is some of the equipment that you're going to need to uh, start lamping your bird. Um, this is the equipment I use. Uh, it works pretty good in all fairness, um, so I would recommend it definitely. Um, I use the Marshall RT um, UHF when I'm lamping. I think they're really cool. They've got a little um, LED flashing on the back. Um, so when, you, when it's on a tail mount, if a bird is stuck up in the tree, it actually gives you quite a good indication of where that bird is as well. You can actually see it quite far. Um, so if you're looking to get telemetry and you want to do a lot of lamping, I would definitely recommend that one. Uh, this is the... Uh, let me just get it in zoom. I'm going to focus up. Probably not. Yeah, well, this is the Phoenix or Phoenix TK16 hand torch. Um, really recommend this torch. It's a thousand lumen output with three different modes on it. Um, I'd really recommend having a little torch like this just to keep in your pocket just for um, trying to catch eye shine close up and things like that um, with different uh, brightness settings on. Um, you can sneak up a lot easier with a small torch like this than you can with a big one. Um, so really small, really compact, waterproof. Um, batteries last really well in it. Three different setting modes. Um, I actually use that on my air rifle as well. Um, so that's really good. Uh, like I say, it's a Phoenix TK16. Um, highly recommend a little handheld torch like that just to keep in your pocket in case your primary or anything you know breaks, which you could do. Um, also, a must head torch. Um, I'm not going to bother telling you what head torch to get. There's thousands and thousands of head torches out there. This one's got three different brightness modes. Uh, and a red light as well. Really nice, it works just as well, it takes three uh, AA batteries. Um, really, really handy for recalling back into the glove. Um, in fact, I would say that is more important than a little handheld torch. And then your actual main primary lamping lamp. This is a lamp, light force striker. Um, when we got it, I didn't realize that you had to rig it up to a battery as well. Bit annoying that is. Um, it's a really, really good light, don't get me wrong. Uh, lamps brilliantly but having to rig it up to a big battery like this is a bit irritating um, these things aren't light and you you know why isn't that everywhere and it can get in the way so um, even though the light force lights are brilliant I would recommend not getting one with a with a battery as well even though we use it all the time and it, it you know it still works perfectly um, but that is a bit annoying um, so that is something to consider I didn't even think Take truth. I just ordered it and then it just came with crocodile clips and I was like, ah, they would, they, you know, they said they would return it straight away, which wasn't a problem, but I thought I'd give it a go. And I just bought like a little uh, cheap battery and I put this in a shotgun cartridge case to actually carry it around with. Um, but yeah, really, really good bit of kit, really robust. In fact, I would say, I would say it's almost too powerful. You blooming illuminate an entire field with it. Um, so that's why I tend to find and lamp with my little one, get some eye shine, and then sneak up as close as I can, and then hit them with a full beam. And this is really handy for when your birds are flying. 
um, really gives out a nice wide beam so the bird can see exactly where it's going. Um, so that's pretty much it guys, bells. Um, I keep bells on my hawks. Um, a lot of people say, oh, don't keep bells on your hawks while you're lamping, it scares everything off. True, you know, it does make noise. Um, but I like it for when they're sat up in trees or, you know, if they f fly off, it gives me that little bit of um, audio aid to help them come back in. I've never had it a problem really with scaring rabbits off or anything like that, you know, we, we do very well. So I just keep my bells on because I, I use um, bells on my hawks all the time. So it's just a faff for me to take them on and off. But it's up to you if you want to go complete silent death hawk, then take bells off. But me, I leave it on. Um, so that's the equipment that I use to go out lamping all the time. Oh, I would recommend always taking someone with you as well, um, just in case you get in a pickle, um, then you can someone else can illuminate more and you've got a couple of torches on the go as well. Um, but other than that, that's pretty, that's pretty much it. Telemetry, head torch, small handheld torch if you want, you don't have to, but if you've got one handy, uh, you know, great stuff. And then your main lamping lamp. Um, the light force ones are pretty good, but you know there's loads of other ones out there as well. So just do a bit of research. Um, there's plenty of reviews up on YouTube. That's the one I use. Um, like I say, it's worked fine. The only annoying thing is there's a crocodile clips. I don't like all the extra leads and stuff. I find it just getting away a bit. But other than that, the lamp works great. So that's the equipment that we use. Um, hope that helps. Any questions or anything, uh, feel free to. Um, leave in the comment section if someone else has got a wicked head torch that works amazingly well I think this one's 300 lumens um, that's a thousand on the highest moan I think well, God knows what that is it's like a blooming you know light beam so it's a lot um, so yeah hope that's helpful and then we'll crack on with the rest of the uh, video uh, one more thing I will say and I know it sounds pretty obvious but I've done it myself make sure everything's charged and bring spare batteries. Uh, the amount of times I've, you know, we've been out and a light started to fail or a battery isn't charged, and you think, oh, I've got some in the van or the truck. You go back there and you actually haven't. So just double check all your equipment because you don't want any of it failing. If your bird, you know, if something does go wrong and you've got to try and find your bird, you don't want your light de dying on you if it's the only light source you've got. So always take spare batteries that's why I always keep this with some spare batteries you just unscrew the tail clip and off you go and same with the head torch as well um, obviously if this dies you need mains power to charge up so just bear that in mind about batteries and having um, an alternative power source because if something does go wrong and your bird sits up in a tree or anything like that you know it happens um, and you, all your batteries start dying then you're going to be literally in the dark and you're going to really struggle so bear that in mind i know it's pretty obvious but <laughs> trust me i've done it before as well um yeah just gone to get john wick um this is this is john here and this is wick here um they've been flying um for a couple of months now they've got a few rabbits under their bag uh, under their belt even sorry and they are flying very confidently and you know nicely recalling well so tonight what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running them out on a rabbit lure and recalling them in the dark for the first time just to make sure they're confident enough to fly in the dark and everything goes okay before their first lamping trip. So just a little bit of prep work. Um, I don't spend ages and ages, you know, tr training them on the rabbits and the lures in the dark. Um, just do a little bit of recall work with them uh, to make sure they you know, can hit a rabbit in the lamp and it doesn't confuse them. Um, and yeah, make sure they're co coming back to the glove okay using your head torch. Other than that, just have fun with it. Yeah, as soon as we're at that stage, you're hitting the rabbit in the lamp and recalling well, go out and give it a go, you know? As long as you can get back out of the tree, rock and roll. 670 grams tonight. He's a good boy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He's gonna get his time to on now. I'm gonna turn, get one of his Jessies ready. Good boy. Big night for you, buddy. Big, big night. You right, guys? Uh, we just come out uh, just to do our little bit of uh, confidence training with John and Wick here. Um, it's bloody freezing. All we're going to do is just literally give them a few recoil, uh, recoils, recalls uh, to the glove in the dark using the head torch. Um, and then we're just going to do a real short flight on the bullocks um, with the lamp. And hopefully, if that goes all according to plan, then we'll take them out on a proper lamping trip tomorrow. 
Um, like I say, they've been flying really confidently, recalling fine, hunting fine, they've already caught rabbits before, so fingers crossed they should just sort of fall into place uh, pretty quickly. It is quite windy tonight, um, so we're going to be a bit careful. I don't tend to normally like lamping in the wind because if they get blown off, they can't see where they're going. Uh, but it should be okay. They're quite good little flyers. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to get their equipment uh, changed over and the lure machine set up, and we'll uh, hopefully it goes okay. So here all we're going to do is just literally shine the lamp on the rabbit and let them catch it, just for confidence. It doesn't really matter how far you pull it at this stage, um, just get used to them hitting the rabbit in the lamp. Um, and then if you want to progress it more, you can do it further, but I find, you know, once they're flying in the lamp, you're absolutely bang on. When you're confident that your hawk is at the right weight where it's going to hit the rabbit um, in the lamp and flying well, progress on to just doing a little bit of recalling work. Um, I always find if they are flying really well in the day and confident, I've never had a problem with it, but of course, try it in the dark as well. And of course, train hard and fly safe. Thanks for watching.